Does the narcissist miss you? They move on or do they just keep it moving? Well, it may look as though the narcissist just keeps it moving, okay? But I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you firsthand that, and therapists will even tell you this, that they do miss you. They miss, of course, more of your supply than you, but as much as you represent your supply or your fuel, it's your type of fuel. So it's just like when you go to the gas station, there's so many different types of fuel that you can use to gas up. They have 87, 89, 91, 93, goes up to like 101. If you get that 101 fuel, man, uh, your car will drive a lot faster and it will get more miles to the gallon. It, of course it costs more, right? Cause that's the high end fuel, but it, it runs cleaner. It sounds better and everything. It just rides better when you're in it. And so that's what the narcissist sees when they see you maybe. Uh, they they are do have attractions to certain people as well because that would be supply. Uh, so it's your fuel though. They like certain grades of fuel and it depends on the individual. But a lot of times it's similar amongst the bunch. And if you were that person that tried for them and tried to give them everything you could and just went above and beyond everything and did everything that you could do, like I said, they would say jump and you'd ask how high, but now, you know, you just turn them off. And this is what they hate is because this kills them forever is when you just turn them off like a light switch and you give them indifference, they, you give them nothing and they tried to hoover you on several occasions and you continue to give them nothing. They're forced to move on as much as they love your supply. When you're not around, they will have a new supply. They will try to approach you with the new supply, try to run into you with the new supply and have the new supply so gassed up that the new supply will be so brainwashed. They will, because you'll be, be being told to the new supply that you were an abuser and so the new supply is going to, they want the new supply to act like they want to protect them, you know? And so they get them in their ego real good. And it's kind of like a triangulation as well. So then if the new supply sees you, that's why you never want to alert the new supply to who the narcissist is. Because they already believe that you're the abuser. And you you have been abusing or they're disgusted with you because everything that in previous relationship the narcissist did to you is really what they tell them that you are doing to them so if you can only imagine so when the new supply sees you if they do see you together then they are, they may taunt you they may break your things they may stalk you and they may be violent so it's it's best to avoid them at all costs but it's this all of these measures are not just to protect the narcissist. This is more or less for you to have a, a clear cut sign that the narcissist misses you and they can't help it. That's, that's what it should tell you, that they miss your supply, but you've refused them and there's nothing they can do, so they're angry about it. So they try to bring the new supply around and make you jealous and to triangulate you and to get you to, you know, try to get Hoover yourself or, or get them to Hoover you back, you know, in the upcoming months and days or whatever. Because they want to plant things in your head. So just you seeing a visual of, of those two together could be enough for that for some people that are weak. But, you know, we're not like that. But I did want to say... That it's bad enough to where when they have the new supply all alone, they will bring up several stories about you and they will put them out there and laugh about it like they had, you know, some good times with you while they're with the new supply. They're talking about you a lot and how when they're trying to degrade the new supply and triangulate the new supply to get fuel off them, they will bring up good things that you did do. And the new supply will be upset about that. In fact, the new supply will start to overcompensate. And that's why if the new supply runs into you, they may 
taunt you, stalk you, hurt you, break some of your, uh, you know, property, whatever, is because they're now fully in their ego and they're trying to overcompensate and make themselves look good with the narcissist. They are trying to win over their validation. And so these are the natural ways that you can be knocked off your center like the narcissist always does when they have you emotionally hijacked. But all of these things are just them reminiscing about you. You know, they're thinking about you and when they're not around anybody, they'll be looking at pictures of you, best believe. They'll be opening that box where they have those items in there, that special item that you may have given them I talked on in that box, right? They'll be rubbing that thing, looking at it, thinking about the, all the times where they were able to control you in any and every which way. And that, that makes them miss you. And all of the extra benefits that came with you, how hard you worked for them, and how much control that they did have over you at the time, it, it really hurts them because they don't get that kind of control every day. You know, like I said, a lot of people don't have the quality of character and ethics and love and emotion and the ability to fuel them the way you did. And so they get out there, they think the gas, grass is, the gas, the grass is green around the other side. They find out it, it ain't. It isn't, but they are built in self-sabotage till the day they die. It doesn't matter what you give them, they will break it. It doesn't matter how good a relationship is, they're insatiable and they will have to cheat because they have to move on because they, ha they feel like that they're always searching for the next better thing. And at some point they meet the bar and they're never going to find it again. And they're only going to have downgrade supply from there on out. At some point in time, everybody meets the bar in anything. You'll have the best house you ever had at some point in time. You'll have made the most money you ever made in a year at a job or whatever, working for yourself at some point in time. That's the bar. And when they meet the best uh, uh, love partner or empath or whatever, and they can't reach that goal anymore, can't even come close to it, well, that's, that's the bar, man. And they'll just have to suffer with downgrade supply for the rest of their life. So don't sweat it, and this is not to make anybody weak. It's just to, you know, pump you with, you know, joy and happiness that you are very special and to keep it moving. What they don't like is the fact that what really makes them mad too is that you took ethics and, you know, self-preservation and respect for yourself and love for yourself over choosing them for you to be degraded and choosing them. And you're just, you're their kryptonite, man, because you both grew up in the same families. You both went through the same experiences typically. And, you know, you didn't, you didn't give up on love because, you know, you made a decision uh, early in childhood. You had to make a decision. And I remember making that decision. And I've heard other people talk about this, but I did. I made a decision that they were never going to kill the joy in me. I said that several times, especially when I was going through hard times in my life, that I was always going to have a certain happiness about me, a certain joy about me. I was never going to let them kill my spirit because there was times in my life where I had gotten, you know, kind of close. And the problem with the narcissist is they, uh, they gave up on love and joy and peace and all the good fruits that come with life and humanity and being a good ethical individual that can live right in this world and to not even just that, but to, to move on from this world and go to a better place. They, they are not in good spirits and most likely will never be. And so they, they know they went down a path that is really brutally evil and 
they'll never probably most most of them i don't want to say all of them but most of them were, will never have a chance at love and happiness for the rest of their life so what kind of life is that you're weak when you are living a life to where you have to abuse people to have to get them to react and cause certain fake situations to get, you know, people to get reactionary so that you can get power and control over it. I mean, it's, it's obvious that the one that puts in a lot of the fuel for the relationship that really is the one trying and working really hard like we did, when, when you step away and give them nothing and treat them with indifference that they're just not there anymore almost, like they're not even on the face of the earth anymore and they can try to get you to react and it just, it doesn't matter. They know when you're over them and it hurts them forever. Now, a lot of y'all may not think so, but it's true. And any time that they get your thoughts of you in, in their head, which they will, because they ruminate a lot and they think about this kind of stuff a lot, that um, they will be much, very much sad. And it, it may not be the, the same kind of sadness that we have, but in all actuality, they live in depression and they live in a, a failure, a failed life, a failed lifestyle, and they know it. And that's why they're always trying to overcompensate so that a lot of people will, you know, see the facade and not see what really is truly going on. That they're completely helpless, hopeless, and, and unsuccessful based on the choices that they've made and continue to make on a daily basis. So, do they move on? Yes, they move on, but they will always miss you and they will actually talk about you a lot and it is to low uh, with the new supply and it is to lower the new supply self-esteem and to get them to triangulate with you so that they gain more fuel from you, from them and also that gets the new supply to try to mold themselves into whoever you were that they miss so much. And that's part of why they do that as well. And that's why you will see the new supply trying to act like you, look like you, walk like you, talk like you, dress like you, drive what you drive and have what you have. So if they continue doing that and they don't wake up, then they'll be just as bad as the narcissist because the enabler is not a good position to be in, y'all. Anyway, if you can give me a like, subscription, and a thumbs up, love y'all. Talk to you later. Peace. We out.